tonight to celebrate the birth of Sri Chaitanya. Viva! The golden avatar of divine love. He brought that love to us a mere 533 years ago and shared it freely with anyone, everyone, and everything he encountered. The distance between us and God is immeasurable. He is the supreme person, the source of all consciousness, all creation. We sit in the vastness of everything, bobbing in an ocean of universes, tucked within a wisp of a galaxy, on a green and blue speck of a planet. So, is there any way, is there, is there any love strong enough to bridge that distance, to reach us? I mean, us, here, now, at the Bhakti Center. <laughs> is it only because of Sri Chaitanya's love that we're able to call this place Bhakti anything? Is our loving invitation to him and his agreement to accept and mystically reside here. Possibly the only reason that this can be called the center of anything. Who is Sri Chaitanya? How can we know him? His diverse nature and character. In our humble attempt to glimpse his fatherless identity, we invite four different devotees to share four moments in his life and through their moods and appreciation, we pray to taste the ocean that is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, Sri Chaitanya is sometimes described as broad shouldered and virile, like a roaring lion. Yet, he has a feminine side, and that is represented here tonight. He is golden in complexion. Yet, he also has a, a hidden, inner, blackish feature. And that is represented here tonight. <laughs> we would like to offer our special thanks to Satyaraj Prabhu, Stephen J. Rosen, and his book, Sri Chaitanya's Life and Teachings, The Golden Avatar of Divine Love. Our play draws liberally from this as a principal source. So now, we present to you, written and directed by Gauravani Prabhu, a mango tree in the courtyard. Notoriously precocious and universally famous. <laughs> I'm not only the son of Sachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra, but I'm also the son of this beloved center of learning, this beautiful town called Nadi. Thank you for coming. Do you know that I've mastered all branches of logic? and philosophy, and rhetoric, and hermeneutics, and many different languages. <laughs> Do you know the Sanskrit word for prodigy? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> Shakunam. sha ku -nam. I can conjugate the word in 21 different ways give you the same number of translations, and at the same time, I can show you how it means exactly the opposite 
of everything that I just taught you. <laughs> you know, when the great Keshav Kashmiri came riding into town on his elephant, holding himself high above all of the learned, pious, intelligent, and handsome, and humble scholars like myself, it was I who taught him how to get down from that great beast and to find his natural place. And why Nima? Because just like the neem tree that I was born under, with its many leaves and branches, I have so many nurturing and healing qualities. But I can be a little bitter to taste, a little bit hard to swallow, if you know what I mean. <laughs> At least that's what my best friend Gadadhar tells me. That is when he's willing to speak to me. Sometimes I see him duck into a doorway or run to the other side of the street just to avoid the excruciating pleasure of crossing mental sores. Gadadhar. <laughs> you know, he's also a pundit. But let's just say he focuses on the more frivolous areas of study. He's part of our local bhakti community here, headed by Advaita Chari. They focus on singing devotional songs and poetry. And they make beautiful garlands of flowers for the tiny deities of Krishna. You know, Advaita, he just has a small, tiny black shaladram stone. But he considers him to be more valuable than the entire universe. I see him each day bathing him with Ganga water, Tulsi leaves, and sometimes even his own tears. It's enough to make even a person like me speechless. These simple acts of devotion. <laughs> but what to do? I've got to cause some trouble. So I argue Mayavadi philosophy with them. <laughs> we and God are one, I say. What is this obsession with the differences? Just be God. <laughs> Keep the big picture in mind. Let me explain. The earth produces vegetables, which are in, in its essence just the earth in a different form. Just be the vegetable. What's the obsession with the differences? You know, my mother Sachi Vanta had eight daughters that all died in childbirth before me. And when my eldest brother Vishvarup was born, healthy and strong, the happiness reigned on her entire family. And then when I was born, the happiness expanded. But that period ended when my parents let Vishwarup study bhakti under the Edwait Acharya. He became obsessed. He renounced the world, took the order of sannyas, left all of his family responsibilities behind. And to this day, not one of us has seen him since. That is what happens when you spend too much time with Advaita and the bhakti. Besides, I need to make money with my God-given intellect. I need to take care of my family. I need to take care of my mother and my father and my beautiful, tender Lakshmi Kriya. The boxers want everybody to join. Oh, it's a universe of knowledge to know. And so many debates still to have. Who has time for all of these distractions? Maybe one day I'll join them. Sir, certainly, I will. I'll sing. I'll dance. I'll serve Krishna. I'll serve the world. <laughs> when I'm old and gray, like a Dwayta. <laughs>
mango for you, the sweetest bhakta amongst us. For God her Prabhu. This is for Srivas and this for Haridas. And this is for you. And Nitai. <laughs> Remember when you asked me for mangoes in the middle of the winter season? Not a mango in sight. And yet, when I planted a seed here in the courtyard of Srivas Pandit, where every seed, every stone has been soaked in the chanting of the holy names, it grew quickly. We all witnessed the miraculous power of the holy name chanted in the company of the faithful. That tree began to produce fruit incessantly in all seasons, so much so that we must distribute it to our friends and neighbors, or else we'll all be drowning in mangoes. Hari Hari! Hari Hari! Hari Hari! When I closed my Sanskrit school, students began asking me if I would lecture again. But I've I've said enough on those subjects. Now the only words that come to my lips are descriptions of the Lord. Hari Harai Nama Krishna Yadavaya Namaha Gopal Govindara Shri Madhusuda we are opening a new school, a secret nocturnal school of kirtan, right here in this courtyard. The students are hand-picked to refine and develop our greediness to hear the names. Advaita is our dean, Gadadhar, our professor, and Nityananda, our dancing teacher. Each day when I am away from you all, I watch the sun drift across the sky, waiting the many hours until we come together again to sing and dance, my beloved companions. Two years ago, when my father passed away unexpectedly, the tragic loss affected me deeply. I wish to offer a special shraddha ceremony for him, and so I traveled to the holy city of Gaya, where I performed his last rites. I came upon a temple along the bank of the Falgu River, famous for the footprint of Lord Vishnu. The image, embedded in a mound of black stone, affected me deeply. I began to cry uncontrollably. I did not know why. In that soft-hearted mood, in that fortunate place, I came in contact with the great guru, Sri Ishwara Puri, who took kindness upon me and initiated me into the ten-syllable Gopal Mantra. Unto the beloved of the gopis, I offer everything. Unto the beloved of the gopis, I offer everything. Unto the beloved of the gopis, I offer everything. I chanted it incessantly. I felt it start to transform my life. It engulfed me. I was in another worldly state. On the rambling journey home to Nadia, I had an astonishing experience. I saw a young boy, beautiful, with a dark complexion, like the bark of the tamal tree. His radiant hair was decorated with wildflowers and a vibrant peacock feather. A fresh garland of gunja berries hung around his graceful neck. His jewelry and ornaments were so bright that I could hardly see him properly. And so I can only fail to describe him. 
his enchanting lotus feet decorated with ankle bells, his finely crafted flute held in his left hand, his strong, beautiful arms like majestic pillars. What words can describe his fiery clothing, his dancing fish-shaped earrings, his lotus petal eyes, reddish at the corners like the color of the dawn. He smiled innocently and approached me, embracing me just for a moment and then suddenly he ran away. What more can I say? It is simply a gift of Sri Ishwara Puri, a culmination of the initiation from that powerful devotee. He helped me to understand that I am simply a fool. All my scholarship and memorization of the Vedas is useless. I can only understand this sacred knowledge by the chanting of the holy names. Ever since that day, I've been chanting the name of Krishna without stopping. Am I possessed by some force? Everything I touch hums and vibrates with God's energy. Everyone I see appears to be an intimate associate of the Lord. Suffering has vanished from my vision. The trees, the plants, the stones, all seem to cry out to Krishna. Every evening when we come together to chant the holy names, my body burns. The Radangas begin to pulse. The Kartals are singing. We roar the holy names and I feel my body forcibly pulled into these sleeping streets. I want to wake the world. When will that day come? When this holy name will break free from these gates and flood every corner of this earth. Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! 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 Hare Hare! Hare Hare! Hare Hare! Many thousands of devotees pull on the rope, and yet Jagannath will not allow it to be moved. The gigantic elephants of the royal house of Puri have come to force the car forward. Still, nothing works. O oh, Lord of the Gopis, do you not desire to go on your Ratha Yatra? Do you not desire to leave the majestic city and return to your simple, sweet village of Vrindavan? The gopis day and night weep for just a glimpse of you. Please allow your chair to proceed. I bow my head at your lotus feet. The chair is moving. The chair is moving. Oh, Jagannath, nothing in this world moves without your will. Not even this body, which I think is mine. This body is like a corpse without your divine breath. So make me your instrument, make me your puppet, take me in your hand and make me dance. Make me dance, make me dance, make me dance.
throat. He sings so sweetly. Just see the joyous mood of his kirtan. I will go there and accept the devotees. But wait, see the other kirtan group. Bakundas Verdango rhythms carry the mind to your lotus feet like the wings of intoxicated bumblebees. But see the sweet singing of Swarup Damodar and the love of Ramananda Roy and oh Nityananda. Just see the dancing of Nityananda. Have you seen such a beautiful vision before? Seven kirtan parties and seven groups all enchanting in their own way. Please, Jagannath, please allow me to dance in all seven at once. to visit your sacred land of Vrindavan, and there I wept in the dust of your footprints. There is no other treasure in this world but you. Everyone unknowingly is searching only after you in all the directions. Many hundreds and thousands of men followed me here to Puri for this Ratayatra. They never leave my company, never allow me to go anywhere alone. I am in great pain to see this. They dig up the earth underneath my feet where I have traveled and then carry it with them as a talisman. They say that I perform miracles, but what other miracle is there besides your holy name? It transformed even me. My heart was stone, but now, it melts it with even the slightest mention of you. I've seen the famous and the infamous. I've seen murderers and statesmen. I've seen gentle Brahmins and humble farmers. And Kashi, Prakashananda, and a thousand monks were transformed by the power of your holy name. And by that power, Rupa and Sanatana escaped bondage. Even the wild creatures of the Jari Kanda forest, they revel in the nectar of your names with tigers kissing deer <laughs> and monkeys embracing wild boar and snakes and birds swinging together in harmony. <laughs> This is the power of your holy name. O oh Lord, please, please, I cannot have this anymore. I desire to leave the crowds and all the masses of seekers. I desire to stay here with you. And Puri, please allow me to stay in your holy place with you. I never desire to leave your lotus feet.
้าเชื่อมันเดี๋ยวข้างหน้าเดี๋ยวมึงนะวิ่งเดี๋ยวกันนะNothing weighs more than the love of Tiana. It is heavier than all of the universes combined. Once Krishna sat beside Radhika, she knew he wanted something. He tenderly took her hand. Her secret mind. Concealed in silence, only the tilt of her head, her sidelong glance, the sign language of her lotus hands, urged Krishna to tell her what he wanted. He burst out, Radha, Radha. Give me your love. Oh, my Krishna! This love of mine is too heavy for me to bear. The audacious Lalita, Radha's dearest friend, she enthusiastically agreed. Yes, none but the queen of Braja could bear this weight. When you are not here, no remedy can ease her distress. We apply sandalwood to her, but that sandalwood, cooling sandalwood, it flies from her golden limbs like dried leaves of paper. A shaded bed that we've made with dampened lotus petals is incinerated by the fever of her longing. Krishna grabbed Radhika's other hand, tears coursing from his eyes. But I, I cannot live without tasting the nectar of this love. Sri Radha smiled openly, and orchestrated by the beating of her heart, the beating of her heart. It was as if all of Dropping on the conversation, how would she answer? <laughs> All right, beloved. I will give you this love you crave, but you will need the sanctuary of my golden complexion to shield your beautiful blackish body. The intensity of my love. It will cause you to stumble and to fall, and you will bruise yourself. <laughs> My golden halo will instantly indemnify you. No harm will come to your soft body, which is more dear to me than life itself. Krishna's black, dark form became hidden in the molten gold of Radha. It made him adopt her mood, her inner nature. His limbs began trembling and dancing in jubilation. He began to cry as Radha does. Krishna said, "Krishna, where are you? 
<laughs> oh, rising moon of the dynasty of Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda, where are you? Possessed by this love, his impassioned cries, they transform the landscape. The trees, they began dancing. The stones who overheard his cries, they melted in ecstasy. And his body crashed to the ground like a tree torn from the earth by a typhoon. But he was unhurt. He was, it was Radha's golden <coughs> brilliance that protected him just as she had promised. Gadadhar. 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 Gadadhar is my faithful and oldest friend. Do you know that he lives in a garden just nearby? I'm sorry. Of course you know Gadadhar is just worshipping Krishna in the form of Tota Gopina. It seems so long since I've seen my dear Gadadhar. Chota Gopinath. Chota Gopinath. Chota Gopinath. Sri Chaitanya vanished. Some say he entered into Jagannath at the Gundicha temple. Some that he entered into Gadadhar's treasured deity of Tota Gopinath, leaving only a discarded cloth and a golden streak on the deity's inner thigh. Everyone was bereft. The flood of despair is perhaps best exemplified in the king of Puri. When he heard that Sri Chaitanya had departed, he fell to the ground and lamented uncontrollably, hitting his head again and again. He finally fell unconscious, unable to bear the absence of Sri Chaitanya. The king left Puri, staying elsewhere incognito for the rest of his days. Now, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, the influential scholar on Sri Chaitanya, wrote, We leave it to you how to deal with Mahaprabhu. Sri Krishna himself, a noble and holy teacher, he says, We make no objection if you do not believe his miracles, as miracles alone never demonstrate Godhead. Now listen to this. He says, it is Sri Chaitanya's unlimited love and its overwhelming influence that would be seen in God himself. I'm going to say that again. It is Sri Chaitanya's unlimited love 
and its overwhelming influence that would be seen in God himself. So, can we know this enigmatic person? He is golden. He is blackish. He is a man, and yet, he is not a man. Radha and Krishna in one form. God, and yet, a devotee. He is bold, yet he is meek. Strong and fearless, humble and kind. He's glimpsed in devotees' relationships with him, and he permanently occupies the courtyard of their hearts, waiting for the gates to be thrown open. Days like today are an invitation for us to open wide the gates of our own hearts and invite Sri Chaitanya inside. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu King! Yeah!